This is Shout Podcast, the official health and well-being podcast from the Firefighters Charity. Hello again. Welcome back to a slightly different looking Shout Podcast from the Firefighters Charity. Over the coming weeks and months, we're going to bring you a whole series of interviews and conversations, taking a closer look at some of the health and well-being issues that affect our fire family as well as some of the incredible fundraising challenges and adventures you've taken on for us. And we're going to start here by listening into a conversation between two of the charity's most experienced wellness and behaviour change coaches, AJ Whitaker and Sally Walker, on the subject of the menopause. In the first of a two-part Shout podcast, AJ and Sally discuss brain fog, HRT and the early symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. Oh, hi, Sally. I've got a cup of tea in my hand. I'm taking a big breath. I'm trying to engage my brain. How are you? Oh, it's lovely to see you, AJ. Um, a bit mixed, I'll be honest. Yeah. What springs to mind, I popped into the bedroom this morning and just stood there because I thought I forgot what I've had here for. Can't remember what it was. And I've I've often done that. It, it feels very normal to do that. But what isn't normal for me is to for it not to come to me fairly immediately. So I've, I'll go into a room in the past and I'll think, oh, what have I come in here for? And then very quickly it's like, oh, yeah, that was it. It just went. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing in here so I just took <laughs> round of water went back into the kitchen um, and I still couldn't tell you what I went in there for so yeah it was a bit yeah a bit uncomfortable a bit scary isn't it there's something around that brain fog that when we don't know that we're menopausal or perimenopausal and and if, certainly if you've got dementia in your family's history, you can start to think, whoa, am I going mad? Mm-hmm. Am I losing my marbles? Is this the long, slippery slope? And that then brings around the level of anxiety where it, when when you don't know what's going on. And, and, and although the menopause is supposed to start in our 40s and finish in our 50s, actually it's not a day is over a period of time and it can affect any age and and you do start thinking you're going absolutely start raving mad yeah no I I I I did feel like that for a minute and then I thought I was a bit anxious as well and I've noticed that I've been waking up in the morning feeling a bit anxious so what I'm thinking of doing is making an appointment with my GP and I'm going to go and chat with her about maybe altering my HRT because I'm thinking that I haven't had that brain fog to that extent for a while. No levels of anxiety in the morning and I'm thinking maybe the balance isn't quite right or I've not got quite enough estrogen in there. So I'm going to make an appointment to have a chat with my GP about it. Yeah. And it's interesting, isn't it, how the oestrogen level still continues to challenge. (laughs) And when I was looking at some of the anecdotal comments and when we've been speaking to people in our menopause cafes, for example, Mm -hmm. it's not the hot flushes that start first. It is the anxiety and the low mood and the depression that seems to be the precursor to realising that we're menopausal. Mm-hmm. And and as you rightly say, those oestrogen levels continue to change. HRT is one option. Mm-hmm. And actually, if you can find your women's health profession at GP practice, it, you can have a great conversation. Yeah. But what we forget is the oestrogen levels continue to change. And I've, and I've started eating by... Phi. Phytoestrogen. <laughs> Plant estrogens, that's easier to it's easier to remember as well. Oh yeah, so you've included some things yeah. like yeah, you done. Yeah. Yeah. It's dull, dull, dull. So you're not enjoying it? <laughs> no. 
However, <laughs> but the alternative of being, and it's only, it, you know, it makes a difference. It doesn't solve everything. But the alternative is being miserable, mm. is being anxious. And that, I don't know if you've ever had that slight heart fluttering. Oh, lots. Yeah. I started with that. I think I, I don't know if I told you this, but I started with that. That was my first indication <clears throat> that I was starting perimenopause. I had loads of skip beats and palpitations and almost like an arrhythmia or what I thought was an arrhythmia. So I went to the GP about that and um, they sent me down the cardiac route, not making the link because I was 42, I think. So, you know, maybe a little bit outside that. Normal. Yeah, right. Um, so I had an echocardiogram. I had a hole to monitor, which was an ECG for five days, um, and then an appointment with a consultant. And although I was getting lots of skip beats, it wasn't a dangerous arrhythmia. It yeah. was a benign arrhythmia, but it was him that actually said to me, "It could be hormone related. Have you thought about that?" And I had, so thank goodness for him. I then went to my GP and I'm lucky. We have a women's health specialist at our practice. And I filled out from Menopause Matters, to that website, um, the green climateric scale. Yes, yes. Really useful scale because it covers everything, doesn't it? It covers the psychological and the physical aspects and the relationship aspects. And I think that's the other thing I was very aware of after I realised that actually my other half was incredibly patient with my slightly short-tempered response to the cup of tea that was a little too dark and didn't have quite enough milk in it. Um, and he was this close to wearing it <laughs> rather than me drinking it, which, which in hindsight was unfair. But at the time, for me, yeah. it was the smallest, most innocuous thing that I just flipped. But why would we have thought that that was anything related to menopause? But that green climateric scale, I love that because it brings everything together. And when I took yeah. it to my GP, she could see what, what was on there, the score. I just took the score sheet part of it, but it it, it was it was great, so I recommend it to all my friends, everybody that's interested, you know, have a how look at that. How many questions are on that? Is it 10 or 15 questions? 15, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there's quite a few, so it gives a broad overview of, like you say, vasomotor, so sweats, hot flushes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bone pain, muscle aches, headaches. Yeah. Um, low libido, uh, bladder issues. It covers like lots yeah. of different things, but it pulls it all together. So yeah. instead of getting tracked off down a cardiac route like I did, which was fair enough, and sometimes you need to get that checked out, don't you? you know? It could be thyroid issues or something like that. Some of the symptoms overlap. Um, so I'm not saying that we shouldn't get checked out, but actually, once you see all the symptoms together, it paints a different picture. And then when, when I started the HRT, for me, that was uh, uh, safe to do medically. And it was my choice. I wanted to try it. The palpitations had gone within about 48 hours, uh, yeah. uh, along with all the other things like night sweats, hot flushes. Muscle aches took a bit longer to go, I think. They didn't go quite so quickly, but a lot of things did settle really quickly. Yeah. I think one of the things that, um, is sort of a slightly taboo subject is the old pelvic floor and bladder control and intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we realise how important oestrogen is and those other hormones that come in that package around muscle elasticity. Because when everything goes south, coughing, laughing, um, jumping up and down watching the television <laughs> and excitement, they become a very tricky affair. Yeah. And also, we you lose some of your, your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And it doesn't matter how many pelvic floor exercises you're doing, if the estrogen is gone, maintaining that elasticity is really difficult. But it's one of those topics, it's almost spoken. <laughs> I'm, I remember it was, it was actually quite embarrassing and it was sort of pre-COVID and pre-online everything being, you know, digital deliveries and being in a meeting and just having that urge, I have to go to the loo. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd have to get up and, and go out. And then there's all the judgment associated with that. People thinking, well, what's she doing? Especially if it happens twice in a meeting. Um, it, it was it was really difficult. Whereas now, now it's a lot easier because I just put my camera off for a, a, a quick minute or two and, and mute the mic yeah. and hop off and, and then come back again. But it, I remember that. And then, of course, anxiety levels are raised. Do you feel a bit panicky? Then in the same meeting, I'd often find I'd lose words. The brain fog yeah. in, I'd lose words. And oh, it was really, really yeah. quite, quite a bit challenging. But the HRT for me has settled a lot of that. But there's some breakthrough stuff going on, which is yeah. why I think I need to go and, and get that yeah. out. And that's the other thing that we that isn't talked about very often. It's almost as though your menopause is on one year and one day after your last period and that's it it's all over well only one day actually, four hours yes i've been very happy with yours but there's this continuum of this journey of reducing estrogen and and as you say the breakout symptoms and i think the other thing that i find interesting about this is the picture that's painted is very negative around yes. menopause, mm -hmm. and to a certain extent we don't choose this. We haven't got a choice. What we do have a choice about is how we manage it and engage with the information and then what we do with it. And for some women, that actually is um, a very powerful experience, Agreed. a very positive experience. But being armed with the information, as you've mentioned about the Greens Climateric Scale, yeah, there's loads of information on the Firefighters Charity website that that can inform how you look after yourself and your health. Bone density is another classic one. You know, doing exercise, being at, there's a raft of information. There's also a raft of misinformation and um, myth. And I think sometimes getting information from reliable sources is really important on informing what you're doing. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, we talked um, earlier about brain fog. Yeah. And um, you'll love this. I've just realised that two minutes ago I had another meeting that I was supposed to be in, and this was supposed to be a really quick catch-up with you and I. We'll need to do it again, but I'm yeah. to disappear. I'm so sorry, but good to see you soon. All right, you take care, Sally. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks to AJ and Sally for a fascinating insight into some of the daily symptoms and concerns that many women experience during the menopause. If you'd like to know more, there's loads of information on the menopause on the charity's website and on My Firefighters Charity, where you can also access some online courses relating to menopause and you can watch and read more from both AJ and Sally. All the links are in the episode notes. And don't forget, you can listen to part two of AJ and Sally's chat on the next episode of Shout Podcast, where they'll be discussing hot flushes, dressing for the menopause and talking about it with family and colleagues. I'll see you then. Shout Podcast. Please subscribe and review us wherever you get your podcasts and check out firefighterscharity.org.uk to find out how the Firefighters Charity could support you. If you liked Shout Podcast, you're going to love My Firefighters Charity, the new social media well-being and fundraising app for the fire services community. Packed with great well-being content from the expert teams at the Firefighters Charity, you can connect with others, join groups, collaborate and have fun with your fire family friends across the UK. And you can get the advice and help you're after from the Firefighters Charity whenever you need it. Head to your app store, search for My Firefighters Charity and register for free today.